first thing that's important to me is that you don't think that you have to be me or like me to live in a household with low bills. If I can do this, you can do this. It's really simple stuff. Really all I'm doing is doing in the city what a lot of people do in the country every day. It's just unusual that I'm doing it uh, about 10 minutes walk from Central Railway Station. In 1996, there were two young kids, a six-year-old and a 10-year-old, and we needed a bigger kitchen and bathroom. And in that three-month renovation, we disconnected the house from town water and town sewer and put in solar panels. And um, the little boy in me has been pretty happy ever since. Um, it was a childish reaction to being told by um, engineers and others that you couldn't do it. So I'm grateful to them. They set me on a path that took me away from the Lord to a journey to try and rejoin the human race. So here I am trying to rejoin the human race. The um, house is really ordinary. You don't have to be technical. You don't have to be skilled with your hands. You just have to do a tiny bit of maintenance every, day, every now and again. The house has kept over 2 million litres of sewage in the back garden in an area that would fit inside the U-shape of those tables over there and it's kept 2 million litres of stormwater in that same area, about um, the size of a large dining room table. So if you think of those five day east coast lows that we get in Sydney, think of that little house keeping all the water there out of the tummies of the whales and the fish in a really simple way that I'm going to share with you tonight. In this kitchen, which can, which can be the most important room, the design goal was that for most of the day, for most of the year, you could be in there and not have the lights on. And that's achieved by these louvers. They bounce the light up, up to this pale ceiling, down to pale cabinets and down to the floor. And the stainless steel bench does too. So you can be in that room, which was just lit for this photograph for the book. So it looked pretty swanky. But in day-to-day -day life, the lights are rarely on, except at night. Out of sight is my biggest mistake over the other side of the room. Um, I was afraid of being bullied by Sydney Water and the Energy Company, so I got the Premier to launch it to give me some border plate between me and those potential bullies. Um, and when somebody walked past the fridge, they asked me, did you put a grate under the fridge and my nervous heart seized? It turns out that we can cool the fridge, any of us, by two degrees, 24-7, just by using what the earth has to give us for free, which is her cold air under the house. Everything that um, we're looking at tonight is about using what earth has to give us for free, her light, her heat, her, and her coldness. So... If we were talking in the Arctic, we wouldn't need a fridge. We'd just need a cupboard. So a fridge works harder or less hard depending on the outside air. This is a job I'm doing in Newtown. Um, this is the, a pipe that comes from the outside of the house to this point here. The floor above this point will hold the fridge. By the time the air has travelled in this 100 mil pipe, about 10 metres, it will have dropped at least 2 or 3 degrees and will rise up below the fridge 24-7, cooling what may be the biggest single energy user in the house. Then this goes up to the bedroom above. There's a small recycled computer fan there. The owner can switch on and it's a, an open... Um, bedroom with a balcony here looking down to the void below. In summer she could turn that on and pull that cold air up to air condition the house. It's wonderful this stuff. When you look for the connections that are there to be used for free, the earth has so much to give us. So really what I'm inviting you to do is to look at how you live and where you live and see what you can get for free. There's probably a hundred dollars a year you can save just by using something that's for free from below a fridge. There are more details in the book. 
This is a um, slab. Under the slab, there's insulation. The slab is yet to be... Um, oh, no, it's... I can't remember whether it's poured there or not. But basically, don't you um, dislike going into a, a bathroom and it's got cold or slippery tiles? And then, you know, they're, they're mouldy and you've got to clean them. So I'm suggesting that if we can um, do something like this, we can have a bathroom that's warm in winter and cool in summer. Um, if you drop your diamond rim, ring through the slats, you can just lift them up. But can you imagine going into such a space with timber and showering and bluting every day? It's just a different experience. Why should the bathroom be a horror story? And for those who think that it may be a, um, a technical mistake not to use tiles, this is a bathroom of the former president of the Institute of Architects, all recycled timber from the North Coast. And she, um, I just sort of constantly get questioned about suggesting we don't use tiles in bathrooms. And here's the president of the Institute of Architects doing it. So I'd like to ask you to bear with me and consider leaving tiles behind and having a lovely warm bathroom that's clean and healthy and so on. Let's scoot. This uh, is my battery. In March 2015, I disconnected from the electricity grid. These wires were cut here. I can't tell you. You know you see a fountain. It was like that. I had this burst of joy in my heart. Um, it was sort of two fingers a uh, day in the air. It was just a moment of sheer independent joy. However, Romance is gone. This modern technology, lithium iron, is terrific. It's light, it's compact, it's very efficient at storing. It only weighs about 400 kilos. But let's not be romantic about solar panels. We are not buying the panels or the batteries. We are buying the promised amount of power. Just because you've got the panels on the roof doesn't mean that you're home and hosed. Osgrid did a survey of 8,000 solar households in New South Wales about five years ago, 4,000 of which were not working properly and the owners did not know it. There is a tsunami of consumer scandal building in the battery and solar world across Australia. These people had sold solar panels for 20 years and I um, had dealt with them and they were reliable. This, I know from my data, is giving me 46% of the promised amount of power. I've had my fridge turned off for most of winter and um, my sense of humour is yet to be found. So I'll just skip through that. I'm, I'm getting... Uh, it's The storage is 12 kilowatt hours available. It should last me about three days. I use four kilowatt hours a day on average. It lasts about a day and a half in, in rainy weather. Believe me, if you go my, my route and get a dud solar system, your whiskey bill will double. So this is what's keeping two million litres of water and sewage here. By the way, I'm very open about my mistakes, what works and what doesn't. There's a blog on my website, sustainablehouse.com.au, about how to choose and buy solar panels and batteries. And I strongly urge you to read it for all the tips and things that I've got from some of Australia's leading solar people. So what happens is the rain tank is here. This deck is over a 10,000 litre tank. When it overflows, the ground up here is sodden and can't absorb the overflowing water. But a metre down, even though it's a clay soil, it can. So the water flows down and these, this is a dry wall, there's no concrete in the sandstone blocks and it flows sideways, even though it's a clay soil. I've sent come up to the top here in, on day five of an east coast low and I watch it like a hawk. I'm weird, I perv on drains and gutters and down pipes. 
and it's my predilection to come out and watch this during heavy rainfall. So I'm very confident about this performance. So it's cheap, simple, and nourishes all the life below the ground. And this is a bobcat with sludge up to above its treads. Um, and it's sh this, these images, to me, sum up our, the distance between us and water in Australia. The bobcat that I took a photograph was sitting on this concrete slab in this lake in a park. In other words, even in a park, the soil was being eroded and filling up that lake. So that's um, just near Central Railway, near my house in Chippendale. So what we've just seen is what the fish and the other little critters and the fish have to live with. And that's the power of water. It takes it, I mean, that's the obvious stuff. It's the small stuff that gets in the fish's tummies and gills and into our drinking water. So um, this is uh, the final point I want to make is one way to get a cool house with low bills is to have a cool street. Not a street like that. This is a photograph from the book. And I've got two points to make. The first one is not the one I'm making now. And um, the other one is about food. Early in, in this book, there's a photograph of some yogurt and eggs and things on the first ten or so pages. Everybody who sits here has been testing interaction. So this is um, Broadway. This is the park and the lake that you're asking about. My house is here. So this is showing the roads during 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. over 33 degrees. And the privately owned land is no hotter than 29 degrees. The roads. 24% of the land mass of Chippendale. In Bathurst, there are over 34% of the land mass. So they're heating our cities up by four to eight degrees. The businesses in your streets here are having energy bills which are thousands of dollars above what they would be if they had some trees there. Um, this is the house. It's five metres wide and it's 20 metres of a 30 metre deep house lot in, in Sydney. It was built in 1894 for a taxi driver and it just shows what we can do with an old house in the heart of the city. So if I can do this with stuff that you can buy from local trades, have installed by local trades and you wouldn't want to live with me, I'm pretty hopeless with my hands that are Galah, like me, can live with for 21 years, and you can do this. All you have to do is say, I can do this, and expect to be told that you can't. So, all you need is a sense of humour, a healthy whiskey budget, and you're home. <laughs> That's my song and dance show, so more of you now and some questions, please. Or we can go home and that's it. The solar, yeah. Uh, in winter time, so often, like in Bathurst, we've got cold houses, but it's hotter outside than inside. So it heats in this little motor, and it pumps the hot air into the room. And mm -hmm. then in summertime, when it cools quicker of an evening, mm -hmm. you can get the cool air pumped in. Are you familiar with them, and do you have? No, it was worth making the trip just for this moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rahamim have one upstairs. And okay. we, we have one on our house, but I'm thinking of putting more panels on, but I was just wondering if you 
I, I can't answer you, but I'm delighted to hear about it, and thank you. <laughs> okay. Do you find it effective for your own needs? Well, I mean, um, um, expert opinion from the house keeper. I, I find it, <laughs> <laughs> I find it uh, effective because I have a, uh, an office that gets access to it, but my husband's part where his office is doesn't, so he doesn't feel the difference that I do. Okay. But it, but it could be, it could be the, it may be the way the fan works, I don't know. But um, off I go now in my mind, scurrying off to find details and at some stage I'll try and uh, have a look at it, I might do a blog about it. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. You know, you, you got the house the way it was. Yeah. Um, This is facing north. This is facing south. So you've got them on the back. Right. These are panels facing the north. Right. Uh, fr uh, from the back of the house, yeah. Yep. Yeah. The other thing panels do, aside from making electricity, is they shade the roof below. These bedrooms at the top yeah. are about four degrees cooler during summer. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. You were an early adopter of uh, battery technology to yeah. capture the solar yeah. energy. Uh, you've just indicated that you had some issues yeah. with the efficiency of the, yeah. the lithium ion yeah. battery that you got. Have you explored other alternates such as the Z cell and yeah. others? Yeah. Do you have some preference now after I, 10 I do. years? Yeah, Would you I mind do. sharing that with us? I do. There are about um, 32 batteries on, on the market. On the blog, I list a website that lists all the batteries on the market and the um, cost per kilowatt hour of storage. And at the moment, I would go for about two or three. Um, the, the second version of the Tesla is a good product. Mm -hmm. So um, Powerwall 2? Yep. Yeah, I wouldn't touch the first one. Mm. Um, the... Um, other two are just escaping my mind. One is from Germany. Um, give me a moment, I'll answer you. But in any event, um, the blog has a list of all the batteries on a comparative website. Um, um, gosh, it's driving me crazy. I won't leave town until I answer your question tonight. I won't let you. Good. But can I, can I just say, do not buy without checking all the things and the tips in that blog. There's a range of things you've got to go through. There are 1.7 million solar households and the people installing panels are holding themselves out as having the skill to design and install batteries. I didn't know this then, but I'll just give you a heads up. Knowing that I was going off grid, these people gave me exactly the wrong inverter. A battery system lasts longer or less long depending on the number of times it's discharged. An off-grid inverter to sustain the life of the batteries will work this way. When the sun is shining and an appliance is on, say a washing machine, that inverter will bypass the batteries and take the energy straight to the appliance. Seems like a no-brainer to me. Um, they gave me another inverter which takes all the energy through the batteries. When you buy a car, you don't look closely at the salesperson and say, now tell me about the engine and the battery and how they work together. You don't have that discussion. You think that they've sorted it out. Unfortunately, uh, we're at the stage where people are just starting to sell batteries in Australia and they don't know the answers to those questions. If you buy an appliance from Harvey Norman or Mito 10 or something, you know you can take it home and plug it in. That It's going to have this three-point plug that will work. Actually, with solar and battery systems, you're buying a different plug for every house. And there's no guarantee that that plug
plug, that design, that marriage of panels, inverter and batteries is one that has been properly arranged by the designers and, and installers. I could give you details, but my blog has got a lot of details about these things and a lot of data. It's not a, a time to go through the details. I just want to give you a warning to get third-party data systems that will tell you what your system is producing and compare that with the amount of power you're using so you can know from the data whether you've got the power that you were promised. Preferably, you would buy and hold 10% back until you've had a week or a month. You won't really know until you've got 12 months. In New South Wales, you've only got two years for minor warranty deficiencies. You've got five years for major warranty deficiencies. I'm not pursuing the minor one. I'm getting the data, and then I'm going to try and persuade these people that when I first asked about nine months after the system had gone in for the batteries to be taken away um, and my money refunded, they said no. I've been talking to somebody uh, here, Mr John Fry. My plan at the moment is to bring the batteries to his farm and shoot them with a shotgun <laughs> and to video it and display it as widely as I can on the social media and in, then hopefully engage in some more civilised conversation with the authors of my lack of humour. So, so I've been asked, is this a detached terrace and how do I get the light down? The terrace is attached to an adjoining terrace along here on both sides. It's in the middle of about 15 or 20 terraces. And this is north up here. I get light down here. I get light through here. These, these big um, translucent, uh, these windows. I get light above the... Um, bathroom with a skylight. I get light into the south-facing room with a south-facing skylight. You can be in that south-facing bedroom and, and have lots of light. There's light bouncing around everywhere. And the light hits these levers and bounces in there. There's, there's a purpose for every room or, or a goal to get light into every room to make it more enjoyable to be in, healthier and so on. Does that answer the question? Right. The extent of my estate from my eastern boundary past this um, four metre finish to the building to my western boundary is five metres. And the chooks live along here and um, they claim the whole of the thing. So many panels, solar panels are working inefficiently. Yep. Does your uh, website indicate who, which um, consultants we could contact to double-check yeah, whether they've been installed it does. Properly? In that blog, How to Choose and Buy Solar and Batteries, I give all the, the things you should go through together with places to go and checklists and accreditations that you should make sure you've got. You're making a 20 or 30-year decision. You can get panel, panels with 25-year warranties these days. It's worthwhile going through that list because once it's not working, it's really hard to get people to come back and fix it up. So it's worth taking some time. And if anybody has some follow-up questions, I'm really serious, you can contact me via my website or via Leah um, and pass on your questions to me. I'd be really happy to stay in touch. So... Um, I'm committed to helping you, given that you've expressed some interest in this, making the right decision, putting you in touch with good installers and suppliers and products. When I was suggesting you plant trees to cool the, the city, to cut energy bills for businesses and houses, I want to be clear that you would also retain the warmth of winter. It wouldn't be colder in winter. So when cattle go up the top of a hill to avoid the frost, they usually or often park themselves under trees because it's warmer under the trees. The, um, the things I would do is include that, thing, that, that second point I didn't get to. I don't want to exaggerate the importance of having a sustainable house or business. The most use of energy and water is in the growing production, transport and waste of food. 
um, when the house changed my life, I did um, a tender for Google's new building and I, I won it because I read into them and Google's 53rd employee was a chef who was passionate about fresh local food. And I discovered that my house is trivial. And it makes sense if you think about it. A, a milking cow uh, will probably drink about 80 to 90 litres of water a day. A well, water-efficient washing machine um, might use 20 to 40 litres of water a wash. If you are in a four-person household with a water-efficient shower head, that will save you about 60,000 litres of water a year. But Google had 300 workers then. A modest breakfast there of a punnet of yoghurt, slice of toast, some bacon, tomato, has about 1,200 litres of water in it. Google had 300 workers, so multiplied by 300 by 1,000, that's 300,000 litres of water for breakfast, again for lunch, so a million litres of water to feed Google every day. So my house saves, um, you know, I don't know, a couple of hundred thousand litres of water a year. But that would be in the food that... Uh, two, four, six, eight, ten. So there's 50 people here, and we, it, we had a, a breakfast that took about a thousand litres of water. That's 50,000 litres of water to feed us breakfast, again for lunch and dinner. So 150,000 litres of water to put bread on the table, basically. So the growing production transport of waste of food is far more strategically significant than an, a sustainable house. So my next answer to your question is, for Bathurst, I would try and buy and grow as much local food as I could, not just because it's going to have high nutrient value and be better for, for you, but because you will save huge sums of energy and water. And you're more, you'll keep more of your dollar in the local economy than rerouting it through Sydney. The other thing that um, you could do in, in Bathurst is what I did yesterday. I actually bought some boots in a shop here that prides itself on only uh, selling mostly as far as it can, Australian-made products. So you're keeping that local dollar, if not in this local economy, at least in Australia. It's really important for the sustainability of country areas to try and buy and shop locally, grow food locally and support local businesses. Just to sustain local economies is just as important as having energy and water efficient appliances. Really important. That's the extent of my ideas. But if you could begin a slow war of um, attrition and get more trees in the streets, um, that, that, that house is worth about two and a half million dollars. And people walk down the street and one across the road so sold for three million dollars four months ago. When people buy or sell, they say, we love the streets. And that will add value to the houses that have the courage to plant a few outside them. And um, it's clear. Trees add value. I know that um, I grew up in Forbes. I was born in Orange. I know that um, some country towns uh, don't like trees. Um, but if you can hold your will and grow trees, your property value will go up for sure, even in a, a town which may look sideways at trees. When I did the project in 1996, it cost me... $47,000. The solar panels were 26. They are now, the equivalent capacity is now 2,000. The water was 11,000. It's about the same price now. That's, these are turn on the ta tap or turn on the light costs. And the sewage was 11,000. I've saved about $70,000 in council bills, but the, um, the real value is um, now just a simple delight in in, in things, but that's an important question. When I did this, uh, no one had done it in the centre of a city or a lot of the things we're speaking about tonight weren't were on the agenda. But because of people like John Fry and others in the room, 
it's now part of the language of regulations and so on. And so um, there are other ways to buy, such as by buying as a group of two or three or four buyers. Don't just buy one rain tank for yourself. If you've got a neighbour who needs a rain tank, say, why don't we buy a couple? You may only save 500 bucks each, but, you know, um, and you can talk together and work out a, it'll be a richer conversation where you might get a better solution and so on. So basically, if you spend about 2000 if you spend $20,000 um, doing what I've shown you today, you can get down to bills less than $300 a year. Yes, ma'am? What advice would you give to people looking at buying a house? Are there any particular features you would look for to make this sort of work Yeah, easier? and, and th there's some non-negotiables, building or buying. Um, you've got to get light into the to the um, building. What you don't want to do, if this is a house with a narrow couple of walls and a long couple of walls, and this is the sun, you don't want to um, go for the view, you know, down the valley or up the hill and get that western sun hitting that long wall. You want to do that. Simple stuff. And if you've got a lot, um, such as the cream of Australian planning designers created an abundance in Bathurst that compels you to um, face the wrong way, don't buy that, that lot. It's just not worth it in the long term because your energy and uh, water bills are going to be 30% more. This town, the rest of our country is getting hotter and hotter and you will pay so much more in your energy and water bills for that, those two things. So those are, I would suggest, non-negotiable things for you. On a diagonal, which makes well, um, you can get in, in, in my book. I've got about nine fundamental design things to look for in a house. One of them is of a, a house on the wrong oriented block on the harbour, and the building was forced to be long and narrow, but he, the architect put little serrated edges in it so that each room had a window going into it. Once you've got the desire and the will, and you won't take no from an architect or an engineer or planner, you can get it, but try not to make your journey as more difficult than it needs to be. Does that answer your question? And one thing, if you are going to build new, for as much as you can, try and use recycled steel and timber. Um, if you see photographs of Sumatra burning and West Papua New Guinea, much of that stuff is coming to Australia and is far cheaper than recycled timber. But the damage it's doing is far greater than all the damage coming from Australia. The climate's changing up there. The winds are changing. Uh, the trade winds are going from off... Borneo and Bali, because the climate has been changed by all the trees that have been cut down. So do try and buy recycled timber. I saw some beautiful examples of recycled t timber today at skill set in, um, in your town. It's worth taking a trip just to see what can be done. How are we going? A couple more questions and then it's Terps time, I think. Look at that, the cameraman's asleep. I really find all this very fascinating, but people who know me know that I'm impatient by nature. And I'm afraid I'm going to die before enough of the ordinary population sort of twigged to what you twigged to way back in the 90s, that we really need to do something about sustainability. And I was wondering if, um, if you know of any approaches made to anyone to do something about the the building industry and, and the developers because they put up the most appalling stuff and it's happening in Bathurst all the time. Mm. So it's very hard to find a building that's got a north-facing well, <laughs> decent wall. Well, the best thing is not words, it's projects. Bring people the skill set. Just um, walking into the building. Um, but importantly, bring the people whose money it is. Try and uh, bring agents through, all the people who would disagree with you. Bring your enemies as close to you as you can, if you see them in that light. 
and bring them to places which speak for themselves because there's light or it's more comfortable or whatever it may be. Don't um, nag them. Show them real projects. Find houses that have got gardens out the front. Um, get data on houses that have, that have sold well with trees in front of them. Um, try and um, get a, a business that's got a really high energy bill, a butchery or a freezer business. Get them to plant some trees and get the data. You only need half a dozen success stories and the media take it up and it takes they take on a life itself. Look at me, 21 years later, still banging on about my dinky little house. <laughs> so... Unless there's any more questions, uh, I, f I feel the wine calling you.